Hello and welcome back to another Drive Teams tutorial. As you might know, a very important element for when editing your pages or posts in Drive Architect is the text element. With the help of this one, you can basically add any type of text to your website and customize it in various ways. In this tutorial, I will show you all the options that you can use to customize this element, as well as which are the methods to add this element to your page or post. Now, once you've opened the Drive Architect editor, you will be able to add a text element by clicking on the plus sign from the right sidebar and looking for the text element. When you find it, grab it and drag and drop it on your page or post wherever you want to place it. What you should keep in mind here is that if you want to add other elements between paragraphs, such as a button or an image and so on, then we recommend that you use a text element for each paragraph separately. So for example, if I want to add a button here and I want another paragraph to be in between this button and this paragraph, I'm going to go ahead and add another text element right below this button. However, if you want to add text content exclusively, then what you can do is simply add one text element right in your own text and when you want to write another paragraph, you can simply click on enter on your keyboard. As you can see, this text box has expanded and you will be able to add multiple paragraphs. Here's another useful tip for you. If you have a text box like this with more paragraphs in it, and for example, you want to break it down into smaller text boxes, you can do that using your keyboard. For example, in this case, if I click here and then press Ctrl and Enter on my keyboard, as you can see, the text box has now turned into two different text boxes. Now, just like in the case of any other element, you can use these controls right here to move, save, duplicate or remove this text box. For example, if we want to remove this one, I'm going to click on this trash can icon here and it will be deleted. Once you add a text element on your page, you will see that you will have two sets of options for it. You will first have the options in the left sidebar right here and you will also have the panel options that can be found here on the top of your screen. I am going to start with the left sidebar options and then move on to the panel options. I will use this text box right here to showcase all of the options. So in the left sidebar, you will have the main options section as well as some other sections. These ones we call the general options and we do have separate articles for each of them. So please check out our knowledge base if you want to see how to use these sections. In the main options section of the left sidebar, the first option that we have is the color option. Normally, this is where you can change the current color of the text from. All you have to do here is select the text that you want to change the color for, click on the color box next to this option, and the color picker pop-up will open. Now, because I am using a landing page, I will first have to click on this unlink from team color option if I want to choose a customized color for this text. I'm going to go ahead and do that and I will select a green color for this text. You can use this slider to choose the color spectrum and then manually pick the color using this color picker. You can also set the opacity for the color either by using the second slider or by entering a numerical value in the opacity field. I'm going to stick to this color and then when you're done click on apply. Next you can choose the type of font that is used for the text. And for that, click on this pencil icon next to the font section. Then you will have to click on this dropdown to open the list of sources available for your site. As you can see, in my case, Google Fonts has been disabled, but I am going to use the WebSafe fonts. Then another field will appear here where I will click and simply choose a font. When you're happy with the chosen one, click on apply. Next comes the highlight color which is basically the background color of this text element. By default, the text has no background color, but if you want to change that, all you have to do is click on this color box and then using the color picker, choose a highlight color. After choosing one, click on apply. Next, you can format the text. You can use the bold option, the italic one. You can underline the text or you can use the strike through option. 
feel free to customize the text as you wish. You can also access these options from the panel options as well. The next option allows you to customize the text. You can make it all uppercase, normal text or all lowercase. To choose one of these options, all you have to do is click on the suitable one. I'm going to leave it to normal text. Then you have the font size, line height and letter spacing options and all of these can be adjusted using the sliders that appear when you click on each one. So using the first option, of course, you can change the size of the text. Using the second one, you will be able to choose the line height and using the third one, you will be able to set the spacing between letters. The line spacing can also be set using this section right here and all you have to do is grab these dotted lines and drag them up and down until you're happy with the result. If for some reason you want to remove all of the options that you have set up for your text, you can click on clear all formatting here. This will restore everything to its default state. The last option you have here can be found under the advanced section and for that click on advanced. With this option you have the possibility to add a type focus animation to your text. For that you will have to select your text and then click on the add button. This will open a pop-up with various settings for the type focus animation. We do have an article that explains this option in particular, so please check it out if you have any questions, but I will quickly show you how this works. This is the text that I have selected and for example I want it to change, which is why I will click on this add new button and write the change that I want in this field. Then you can go ahead and customize it as you wish and when you're done click on apply. Now you will see the animation listed here and just to show you how this works I'm gonna save the work and preview this page. This is how the text will look like. As you can see the animation has been applied. However if you need more help with this option in particular please check out the article that I will link here. So these were the options from the left sidebar and now let's go to the panel options and see what you can do from here. So first of all, the panel options can be moved anywhere on the editor where you want them to be placed if you're not happy with them being here on the top of your screen. This is why this dotted side is here so that you can grab this panel and move it wherever you want it placed on your editor. The first four options are the basic ones that you will find in any text editor and that I've showed you here as well, which are the bold, italic, underline and strike through options. All you have to do to apply them is to select the text and click on the one that you want to use. Then you can transform the text if you want and if you click on this paragraph icon, a drop down will appear where you can transform your text in various ways. First of all, you will be able to apply headings to your text. All you have to do is choose between the six different types of headings that appear in this drop down. Then if you want to revert the text back to a paragraph, you can simply click on paragraph here and as you can see the changes will immediately apply. Then you have the block quote option, which means that you can easily transform your text into a block quote by clicking on this one. Also here you will find the plain text option, which can come in handy if you want to transform your text into a plain text meaning that you want a simple text element, one that does not inherit styling or CSS properties from your themes or certain other plugins. The difference between this one and a paragraph is that the paragraph is for writing text content, while the plain text element is for layouts for when you're creating landing pages or theme templates where you only need simple text. We do have an article that explains how to use the heading options and I will also leave that linked here if you need more information about that. Next, you will also have the option of aligning the text element. It can be on the left, on the right, at the center or justify. Simply click on the preferred position and the text will be aligned accordingly. If you wish to create lists, you can also do that from the panel options and you can create an unordered list with bullet points or an ordered list with numbers. What you have to do in this case is to select the text that you want to create a list with and click on this option. You will see then that the text will be structured in the selected list type as showcased here. 
Next, you can add the link to your text using the hyperlink option from the panel. First of all, you will need to select the text, like so, and then click on this chain icon here. This will open the small pop-up where you can set up the link. If choosing a static link, you will have to enter the URL of the link right here in this field. If you choose a jump link, you will have to select the target, and if you choose the dynamic link, then you will have to choose the source and the actual content to be linked to this text. In case you need more information about how to insert a hyperlink, please check out the article that we've created about this. After setting up the link, all you have to do is click on insert and the text will be linked. After this option, you have one more option, which is the dynamic text one. This is very helpful if you want to easily insert dynamic information to your text. When you click on the option, a pop-up will open, in this case as well, where you will have to first select the source of the dynamic text. Click on this field and choose one of the available sources. One thing to keep in mind here is that if you choose the global field source here, then you first have to make sure that you've completed the global fields from your Drive dashboard. If you haven't, you will see an error message and a link to the global fields dashboard on which you can click on to set up the global fields. If you are not familiar with this feature, make sure to check out this article to find out more information about it and why it can be so useful. Click on the desired source here and then another field will appear where you will be able to choose the actual information to be linked to the text. For example, let's choose the phone number here and then click on insert to add the information. As you can see, this dummy phone number has been added. Lastly, in the panel options, you will have these three dots and if you click on them, you will be able to choose between these three options. By default, you will be in the normal mode and the distraction-free mode will give a more familiar look when using the text element. You can see how the text element looks like now and if I choose the distraction-free mode, you will not be able to see the actual container of this element, but you will, however, be able to customize the element and add more text to it as you normally would. The other option here is the pinned mode, which will basically pin the panel options bar to the top side of your editor and it will become full width. This is just a matter of how you prefer to use the Drive Architect editor. These were the ways to use both the left sidebar options and the panel options in order to customize a Drive Architect text element. Since this element can also be found in various other elements, such as buttons and so on, you can always change the text options from the typography section of different elements. I really hope this tutorial was useful for you and don't forget that you can always check out our knowledge base for various tutorials and articles about Drive Architect and other Drive Teams products.